Bev is working at a factory where she is paid $5 per hour that she works plus a fee up front. What do you notice about that little blurb that I just read? It doesn't give you the fee. But it, what is this? Come on, folks. This is your chance to focus, Lauren. It's the rate. And what are the two important things about linear relations? The rate and the initial fee, the flat fee, the fixed part, whatever you want to call it. And we've got one and we have to figure out the other. So how are we going to figure out the other? Because different questions are different. In some cases, you might do one way. In this case, we're going to do a particular way. Lauren, what do you think? Yeah. So as I go up the table, I'm actually going down five. That's what you mean, right? Very good. So this is 45. And then if I go down again, I go down to 40. Folks, put your pencil down and look. Every time you're working with a table, you have to look at what the left side of the table is going up by. And if it's not going up by ones, you got to think. If it's going up by ones, you just go 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever, right? But if it's going up, if it's twos or counting by something else, you have to do a little bit of math to figure out what the change is on the other side. And I can tell you this, on the learning goal, some people, and on the last quiz, because it had this on it, uh, some people missed that it was, this one's going up by ones, but another one was going up by twos or fives and they forgot to divide when they were finding the rate, right? This is a slightly different question, this one, but so think about it. You always have to look at what the number of hours is changing by, okay? And then I'm gonna fill in this table. And so this is 55 and this is 60, okay? It says graph the relation. So for two hours is 50. And for zero hours is 40. This is going up by tens. So I don't actually have space for five. I could kind of, whoops, I could, I could like eyeball it if I wanted to, right? And then, but I'm just going to put the ones that fit. So four and 60, okay? And then I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to draw a line. Because when we graph, it's, we're not just plotting points. We also want to show that line, okay? And your line can be even better than mine because mine is hard to do on the computer. Determine an equation. How do I determine an equation? And what do, us, what do some of us always forget for the equation? Yeah, good. Caleb, what do you think? C equals... So is it cost? Earnings? This question is actually earnings, so I'm going to use E. You do not have to. You get to pick your own variables. If the question gives you the variable, like if it, if it said E here and then you wrote C, that would be a bit weird. And like technically it's kind of wrong, but I don't think EQAO would would mark you wrong for that and I don't and I wouldn't either but it's something to work towards like in mathematics we do want to be more and more and more clear we want our communication to be better right so it's something to work towards that we're being consistent okay and Tariq told us that we're looking at a rate and we're looking at a fixed part the order doesn't matter but which part how do I how do I write the rate Caleb you yep yeah, no just Caleb yeah so what is the rate? I got it right there. Five. So how do I write it in the equation? Five n. So we always put the n with the rate, and then plus three. What was that? Plus forty. Thank you. I thought that's what you said. Awesome. Why is it forty? Good question. Because. Because that's that for zero number of hours, you've got 40. Say that again. No, that's the rate. Oh, yes. The other thing I remember from the last quiz 
which um, a few of you may not have been here and you might not have got back, so I have it here and I'll give it back to you and you can look at it today. But another good thing to do is look over that quiz. If you have it in your bag, find it and look it over. But another thing was if the table doesn't start at zero, you have to figure out zero. A few people didn't do that. Same thing on a learning goal. A few people, and I know you know that because I've seen every single person in here do it. You just got to remember to do it, right? You just have to remember to do it. Part of the hard part of mathematics is carefully reading questions and making sure you get those small details. Like what does the table start at? Is it going up by ones or is it going up by something else? Like there's all these little things you have to look for. So it's, it helps to take your time and slow yourself down. This is an example of which type of variation. We haven't talked about this in a while. Don't shout it out. Some of you had a really good way of remembering this. So don't, please, please, please do not shout anything out. How many people think they know which one it is? And even if you don't know, I want you to make a guess in your head, and then you get to check if it's right or wrong. Because if it's a test tomorrow, and you say, oh, I can't remember which one's direct and which one's partial, can you tell me, Mr. Miller? I'm like, no, I can't tell you. I'm not the one taking the test. You're taking the test. If you don't know, unfortunately, that's what a test is about. So you guess, and you move on, and you don't sweat it, right? But now you get to check if your guess is right. Again, time machine, let's find out. Cole, what do you think? Partial. Well, how do you know it's partial? Um, because it has like a plus and minus and a direct Very good, Emma. Very good. Initial value, very good. Haley, what were you going to say? Good. What else? Somebody had, somebody had like a, a thing. Yeah? What was it? Do you remember it? I love it. Direct to the rate means just the rate, no initial value. Very good. Whoops, there's no space here. If Bev worked for 12 hours, how much would she make? So this is saying shh, N is 12. So I do earnings is $5 per hour. $5 per hour? That's illegal. Maybe for babysitting or something like that, you're allowed to be... Like, why do some things... Like, babysitting isn't a real job, so you can pay people whatever. It's like slave labor. Or delivering papers is not even paid per hour. It's paid per paper. So you could work for, like, three hours and make eight bucks. Like, that's not legal, but I don't know how they get away with that. There, I'm sure there's a thing. I'm sure it is technically legal, but... So, hold on. Five dollars per hour for 12 hours plus the initial amount of $40. Five times 12 is 60. So that's the per hour part. And remember, the linear relations often, the total comes from two places, the fixed part and the rate part. In this case, the rate part is 60. The fixed part's always 40. $100 total for five hours, for 12 hours of work. I think that's still illegal, but it's closer. Bavanja, yes. No, partial is asking if if the initial value is zero or not. If it's zero and I start at the origin like that, start at zero. Or in the table, if when it when when it's zero hours, my earnings is zero, that's direct. If there is a, a, an, an initial value that you're starting from, so you're not starting here, you're starting like up here, then it's partial variation, okay? Okay, so $100, I should probably like actually finish this answer. Therefore, she makes $100. $100 is earned, okay? So what was going on in that question? It only gave us one value in the table and then it gave us the rate. We could figure out the other values. We could do some graphing. We could come up with an equation. I know you're good at that from our exercise yesterday. 
uh, maybe use the equation and then direct partial variation, a reminder of what that's all about. Very good. A limousine company charges a fare based on the following formula. C equals 12D plus 20. Somebody tell me something about, just tell me one thing about the limousine company when you look at that formula and think about it. This, look at how much we know about linear relations now. When you can look at a formula and understand the cost structure of that company. Yeah, hold on. Lavanja, you got a hand up? Okay, stop right there. This limousine company has a flat fee of 20 bucks before you even get into the limo. Maybe that's like an insurance fee. Maybe that's like um, the cost, possibly something, yeah. Or like, I don't know, some kind of security fee or something like that. Somebody tell me something else about this. No, you already went. Somebody else? Caleb? 12 bucks per, not, yeah, D for day, but it, in this case, it's not that. It's distance in kilometers. So per kilometer, very good. The rate is 12. It's $12 per kilometer that you drive. That's insane. That's ridiculous. $12 per kilometer. That's like really expensive. No, because if you rent a limo, you're probably going to drive like 40 kilometers or something. No, it's definitely going to be expensive. Anyway, that's fine. Oh, so A, I didn't even notice. Question A is explain this in your own words. So go ahead and do that. I want you to write your own. We kind of took it up ourselves, but you write your own little blurb just in the white space there about what exactly this means. This is a really good example because what if there's a question like this on the test tomorrow? So, like, some people are sitting there and they don't want to answer this question because I know we don't always like to write out sentences. But if there's a question on the test tomorrow like this, you have to answer it for marks. And if you don't know how to do it, it's too late for me to teach you then. But now I can help you. So try now and see how you do so you're ready for when this question comes up on the test tomorrow. There, there will be a question like this on the test tomorrow. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to put one on there. So now's Why? your chance to get ready for it. Why? It's simple. It's short. Because I know you can do it as well. We'll see. Probably not. We Maybe we'll take something up, but we'll see. Vanja is nothing. That's not true. There's actually lots of people in here who do. I know, because I want you to write your own. Some people still haven't. Okay, so here's what I wrote. The limo costs $20 up front and $12 per kilometer driven. 
That's the kind of answer you would put if you had to say it in your own words. If I gave you the equation, you had to turn it into words. Or I gave you a graph and you had to turn it into words. Or I gave you a table and you had to turn it into words. Any of those could come up. Yeah, that would be, that, probably, that might be worth two marks. Because you might get part of that right and part of it wrong. You would write something like that. Yeah. An explanation in real words of what's happening in real life. Sketch the relation in the space below. How do I show this relationship just as a sketch? You don't need a scale. You don't have to go one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to do any of that. What's important about this? Go ahead. So I'm starting, I think what you're saying is I start up here at 20 and then I show that it's increasing. Very good. And this is the cost and this is the distance. It's nice to kind of label the, the things as well, but the most important part is that you're showing it's partial variation. It doesn't start at the origin. If it was a situation where it was decreasing, then you would show that, right? It could be that you that it went like this, but... This one doesn't. Yes, Tariq. Yes, quickly. What would the cost be to travel 19 kilometers? Go ahead and try this one. Go ahead, Ethan, try this one. You're using the equation. So Ethan just told me $12 per kilometer for 19 kilometers would look like this. 12 per kilometer for 19 kilometers would be 12 times 19, right Damien? Plus the extra $20 at the end. And my total comes from two places, two parts, 12 times 19 plus the extra 20. That 248. I thought it was 76. Uh, gotcha. The cost for 19 kilometers. That's pretty expensive, eh? How far is 19 kilometers? Miles are longer, so it'd be fewer miles. It'd be like, it'd be like, um, it'd be like about ten miles, I think. I don't know. How ex how how far though? Like from here to where? My house. Not too long. My house. Yeah, from here to the edge of Kitchener. Really? Would cost you two almost two hundred fifty bucks in this limousine company. I think they're going to go out of business. It's a pretty big ripoff. If you're rich, I guess. Say, say it again. A thousand. 
hundred. That's not on the test. For each situation below, determine the rate and initial value and the equation and answer any other questions given. On the back. Haley, that's why we're doing this, so that you can figure this out now. But you got to do it. Who do you think? The rate always has the end. So Caleb just taught. What do you think about this? Listen, Shh. folks, we gotta we gotta get this done. So let's focus. A farm pays students eight dollars per basket of fruit picked. So what is the eight? The rate. The rate. And some people might think like, is it the rate? It only gives you one number. So what does that mean? So the initial value is zero. Zero. So the equation is you, you could use C, you could use E, whatever you want. The cost for the farm is $8 times the number of baskets that the student picks, or strawberries or something like that. I would just put one strawberry in each basket and then you'd make a lot of money. Right, Noah? Is this direct or partial? How do you know? That's okay. Listen, if you don't like doing it from the equation, you could ask yourself, well, if I graphed this, what would it look like? It would start here and go up because there's no initial value. So that means it's direct, right? You could, you could visualize it. That's why we do this stuff. So that you have multiple ways that you can think about it and you got to pick the one that you like best. Use your equation to find the earnings of a student picks 15 baskets of fruit. So go ahead and do that one. You can do it on your own. Come on, some of you aren't writing. Let's go. This is your chance. Practice. Ethan. $8 per basket for 15 baskets. How easy is that? So I did 8 times 15. What is 8 times 15? The student would make 120 bucks. That's better. That's better than the other job. Five bucks an hour? That was terrible. The first question. Hardware store charges $100 up front plus $20 per day to rent a post hole digger. Go ahead and try this one. What's the rate? What's the initial amount? What's the equation? It is 942. There's a clock up there. Oh, oh. Noah, which one's the rate? In this question. How do you know? Guys, guys, 
Can you stop talking for five minutes so we can get this done? Caleb, tweet. This is the rate. So what's the hundred dollars, Tariq? Uh, it is the essential um, value. Very nice. So the rate is twenty, and that's dollars per day. You don't have to put the units, but it is important to think about the units. And the initial amount is a hundred dollars. Whoops. So my equation is the cost twenty dollars times the number of days plus the extra one hundred. Yep. You are, in a way, except we're not subtracting it from how much money you have in the bank. So we're adding up the costs, and the total cost is eventually what you will pay. So it does work out that way. Use your equation to find the cost of a person rents the digger for 14 days. So this one's the easy one. The cost is $20 per day. Twenty. $20 per day for 14 days plus the extra 100. 20 times 14 is I'm pretty sure it's like 280. Yeah, 280 plus 100. Very good. I am a calculator. I'm really good at calculating. Okay, hold on. Wait, was that right? Yeah, I think so. Hold on. If you paid two hundred dollars, how many days did you keep the digger? I want you to try this one, and then we're gonna take it up. This one's different. The last one was the type we did a bunch of. It gives you the number of days, and you just use your equation. But this one is the one where you gotta work backwards. You gotta think about it. So try. If you haven't, if you haven't been doing the last few, that now's the time to try it. Let's do it. Yeah. Did you do it? Listen, folks, if you are not trying this, you are missing an opportunity to fly right now. Like a really important one. He's going on a trip. This is how we did these the other day. We took 200 and we broke it up into the fixed amount and the rate amount. 
What is the fixed amount? The fixed amount is 100. Shh. Okay, I'm telling you right now, this will be on the test tomorrow. A question just like this. This is your last chance to learn how to do this. And probably half of us just gave up that chance because we didn't try. This is where your choices count, folks. Oh, is it decimal? No, 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 just stop talking. I just want you to think. Oh, we did this. Yeah, you just stop talking. We definitely did questions like this, but they are hard. They are harder. You've got to know when it's time to like close your mouth, stop moving around, and get some work done. This was one of those times. But now we're moving on because we only have 25 minutes left of class, and I want you to get some to some independent work. I'm trying to I'm trying to help you here. When I say this is a really important one to try, that's when you like focus and try. So I'm going to show you how to do it. But watching me do it is not the same as doing it yourself. You don't learn by watching other people do things. Not You don't learn it well. So I take my total of 200 and I pull out the fixed part because in that 200, there's 100. There's this 100 right here. So I pull that out and what do I have left? I've got 100 left. So this is the initial part, and this is the rate part. But if the rate part is $20 per day, and it adds up to $100, how many days is that? So I take 100 and I divide it by 20, and I get five. Five days. $20 a day is $100, plus the initial $100 is $200. That's your total. Do you see how those add up? But you've got to be able to do it on your own. I'm telling you, if you've never really done that on your own, you probably won't be able to do it on the test. That's just the way that it goes. Because these, these ones are harder. But I'm going to show you one last thing. This one... See how it comes from two places. So we're working backwards when we do it like this. We're doing a very similar thing to that, but we're just working backwards. Yes, Bhavanja? Um, when we do the test, we have totally put 200. You should show some work and some thinking. You don't have to do it exactly the way I do it. But where did the 100 come from? So you should show that. Okay, so you should 200 minus 100. And then 100 divided by 20. Okay, graph this relation. So to run an ad on a radio station, it costs a fixed cost of 400. Well, I know what that means. It means it starts right there. Plus a cost of $50 each time the ad runs. $50 for one is 100 for two. So I'm going to go over to two and I'm going to go up 100. You don't have to do that. That's just what I chose to do. Draw the line. Write the equation between total cost and number of times this ad runs. Well, that's pretty easy. So the cost is $400 plus $50 per time that it runs. Here's where this one is a little bit different. At another station, so station B. There's no fixed cost, but there's the cost is $100 each time the ad is run. Write an equation comparing total cost, number of times the ad is run at station B. Draw this relation on the graph. So one equation, take a look. Put your pencil down and watch. I'm going to do this one so we get it done, and then I'm going to let you work on your own. So there's no... Oh, no, wait, it doesn't compare it. So never mind, this one's straightforward. No fixed cost but it's $100 each time the ad is run. So this one is cost is just 100N. So how is it different? I'm gonna use a different color. It starts at zero and it goes up 100 every time. So it's eventually gonna be more expensive, but it starts less expensive. And these questions often 
get us to compare when one becomes more expensive. So on the graph is a nice way to do it because I can see it, right? But that's it. It doesn't ask me any of the questions, so for that I'm done.